Brothers and sisters, why don't you please stand and let's begin our critical mass to this day. Let's face the entrance of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. In the waters of baptism, our brother Chris died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May you now share with him eternal life. And so with that, brothers and sisters, let's now begin in song. Please join us in our opening hymn, number 594, Shall We Gather at the River, number 594. <laughs>
citizenship is in heaven. And from it, we also await the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform to his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Confused. 
And Jesus came into the world and he said, I'm going to show you a new way. In the midst of all that darkness, light came. And he did show us a new way. He taught us new things. He gave us some attitudes. He told us, don't just love your friends, love your enemy as yourself. You know, if you love God first of all, your mind, heart, soul, strength, love your neighbors, and love yourself, love everyone. He taught us to forgive. Because he realizes when we don't forgive, it just tears at us. Tell us to forgive. He gave us a golden rule. He told us, treat others the way you want to be treated. And in a day like today, he has taught us to give. This isn't the end. This is the beginning of something greater. And the greater is the gift of eternal life. Okay, it's hard to see that today in the midst of the darkness. You know, the sadness and all of that too. But that's where our hope stems from today, is eternal life. And during the Mass, the priest takes bread and wine and he holds it up. And we believe that at that time, the time of consecration, becomes body, blood, soul, divinity of Jesus Christ. And when we take it, we receive it, Jesus becomes a part of us. It's not a sign, it's not a symbol, it's truly Jesus. And what did he say? He journeys with us. And we realize as Catholics, we never journey alone. Christ goes with us. I just remind people, you ever wonder sometimes when you sin, how come it feels so bad inside? Well, that's because as Catholics, if the communion is inside, Jesus doesn't want to live with sin. He's going to fight it. He's going to say, no, out. Get out. And so that's what has to happen. Out it goes. <coughs> Our lives are Christ. And at the end, he is, as a matter of fact, is getting the charcoal ready. We're going to use the incense. Watch it. It goes up. And today, what do we do? We raise a Christian soul to God. Pray that he have eternal life. And for us, our prayers go up to God today. So offer him. If you're mad at God, tell him you're mad. It's okay. God's been mad. If he wasn't mad before, I He's made. He can handle it. Okay? He can handle it. Whatever your prayers are, offer them to God today. But I just want to show you a little story, and we're going to lead this into our Gospels, okay? It was a story about the respective parents of a, of, a, of a son and a daughter who planned on becoming married. They're engaged. And so they decided, these parents, to get together and put together a wedding gift. And you know what they decided on? A Bible. And the reason for the Bible was because in the words of the Bible, there are all kinds of descriptions of how we handle life. Every, everything that life throws at us, we find in the pages of the Bible. So a Bible comes. Okay? But before they wrapped up the Bible, they put, wrote out the checks, big checks, and they put them in the pages of the Bible. Okay? And then they wrapped them. Well, the story goes that when the newly married couple opened their gift, they were surprised. And just a Bible? They were thinking just a Bible? They were expecting something a little bit more. But here's a punch of Imagine the surprise of the parents that on the 10th wedding anniversary, their checks had never been cashed. Okay? All right? So we're not going to allow that to happen. We're going to break that open today. Let's break open the Bible today. Okay, let's look at what we said today. Let's pray. <coughs> Our first reading of today is the prophet Isaiah. Prophets weren't, that wasn't an easy task. To be a prophet was not easy. People didn't like what they say because he called them back to a way of life that was of God. Many times they were very angry, but in the midst of all of that, they also had to be a messenger of hope. So what Isaiah does today. On this mountain, the Lord will provide for all peoples, a veil that veils all peoples. Brothers and sisters, when we think about mountains, how important they are, think about where we see mountains. We're reading in the office of readings during this Lenten journey as priest, the story of the book of Exodus. Right now they're at Mount Sinai. Moses goes up on Mount Sinai and he's given the ten commandments. Okay, the law of the Old Testament. We think about the Beatitudes story. Jesus goes up on the mount and he teaches them and he gives them the Beatitudes. Okay, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what's righteous. Okay, another mount story. But ultimately the story of Jesus ends up on a mount. When Jesus is condemned to death, he actually takes up his cross and what does he do? He climbs upward until he gets to this place called Calgary. Calgary. Golgotha, the place of the skulls. Okay? And there what happens? They crucify him. He's nailed to a cross. Okay? He's murdered. Let's just say it. He's put to death. He's murdered. He's really innocent. And yet they put him to death. Okay? And they put him to death. And from there he teaches. Forgive them for they know not what they do. I thirst. Only we owe your son. We owe your mother. He's thinking about others rather than himself. Okay? 
And what do we realize? All of a sudden, from darkness to three, there's, there's, there's darkness over the whole world. The veil in the sanctuary is torn in two when it happens. And what does that mean? The Holy of Holies is exposed. I can only, as a, if I was the head priest, chief priest, I can only go to the Holy once a year, the Holy of Holies. Jesus broke that and said, here's a new covenant. It's a covenant based on me, on my teaching, on who I am, my life, and my own. And it is found in Jesus Christ. That's what they talk about, Isaiah. Forward. On this mountain, I, Jesus, will die. The veil will be broken, and we will establish a new covenant. Where all people have the hope of eternal life. Okay? What if? <coughs> what if? Let's get to that question today. Martha and Mary, in that gospel of today, we hear of Martha Greek mean Jesus. Martha and Mary have already sent word to Jesus that Lazarus is ill. And Jesus stays where he is for a few days, and in the meantime, Mary, you know, in the meantime, what happens? Lazarus dies. So now he's dead, and Martha goes out to meet Jesus, and Martha is not a happy camper. He talked about somebody that's upset. Martha was upset. And what's her question to Jesus? What you <coughs> What if? We ask it all the time. What if I had applied myself more in school? What if I had said this? What if I had done this a little bit differently? We say this all the time. It's part of our language. Martha says, what if you had been here, Jesus? What would have happened? What would have happened, Jesus, if you had been here? And what happened? Okay? And Jesus says this. He hears her and he says, realize this. I am the resurrection and the life. Well, let's stay with the what if for just a moment. You know, whenever it comes to the death of someone like Chris, the way it went about, we all ask the question, what if? What if I had been there? What if I had known? What if I could have said something? What if I could have done something? It's a natural part of this whole thing. What if, what if, what if, what if. And today I want you to do this. Please stop. Please stop. You're going to run yourself in circles. Please stop. Because I tell you this. If you could have done something, if you could have said something, if you could have been there, you know what? You would have. So please stop the what if. Okay? Can you do that for me today? And let's just push forward. Push forward. And that's exactly what Jesus does. Jesus goes to the tomb and he says, Martha, there I'm the resurrection life. I'm going to show you something about who I am. And he goes out and he says, Lazarus, come on and out he comes. And he ties, says, I'm trying to let him go. I'm trying to let him go free. And he does. And we have a moment history, where history could have been changed, we could have gone after Lazarus and said, Lazarus, you were dead. What is it like when we die? You experienced it. What do you experience? Who do you see? What do you see? Who don't you see? And yet you realize this. We don't hear one quoted word from Lazarus. Not one word. And you know, maybe that's the way we feel today. If we could, we'd say, Jesus, tell Chris, Chris, On time and letting go. I understand that. I can understand that. But what is the focus of the Gospels? It isn't on Lazarus. It is on the power of Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ could suffer, die, and rise for us. Sad fact for Lazarus is this. He had to die again. We all face death. All of us. One way, shape, or another. But the hope in all of them is the power of Jesus Christ. One final thought today. I saw the Bible up here, just looking at the Bible. We kind of marvel at, at his life a little bit here, too. I'm going to pull the Bible up here, too, and just talk a little bit about this. You know, the two things that he was really, really good at was a mechanic, right? And also, we know that he liked to fish. 
Sisters, please stand. Karen comes forward to lead us in our petitions this day. Let's all offer our own prayers today to our God. Let's pray for Chris and eternal life. Let's Karen lead us in our petitions on this day. A baptism of Chris received the light of Christ. <coughs> Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother Chris was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many family and friends of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Christ seek, seek comfort and consolation. 
heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes in faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, our prayer, our prayer. We are assembled in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Chris. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, our prayer, our prayer. God, our Father, be with these good people today. Help in their sense of loss and grief. Be with us, help us to lean on each other in the days, the months, the years ahead, in the hope of eternal life on all. And we ask all of this now, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To be seated, everyone. Now, as our gifts are presented, and we share this As the grand force of gifts, please join the singing number 439. Be not afraid. Number 439.
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and the glory are yours forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace on thee, and light, peace on you. Well, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. To live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let's take a moment now and talk to each other. Sign of peace.
Sin and prayer. Friendly, friendly God, that your servant Chris, who journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. My family invites you to a luncheon which will be served then after the middle of the cemetery. If you choose not to go to the cemetery, that's fine. Just simply sit down in the church basement and await the family's return. So with that, let's pray grace before me. Also, bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy mouth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Chris, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in part, and we take comfort as a hope that one day, we shall again see him and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Please join in singing our song of farewell, number 833, number 833.